Howdy. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I started this YouTube channel to help my own MS clinic patients learn between visits. And it's my hope that through these videos, I can help you learn too. Today, I'm embarking on a new YouTube adventure. I'm trying out a, a new concept of a video, and so I'm super curious to get your guys' feedback. Um, this is the first of what could be um, a series of videos, and so I'm going to be very eager to read in the comments what you think. I've had a lot of requests uh, to talk about or demonstrate or explain parts of the neurological examination. And the neuro exam is something very special, and so I've really been kind of mulling over in my head the best way that I, I might share it with you. Comment. Sometimes when, uh, when I see the neuro exam or when I do the neuro exam, uh, it makes me think of the movie The Karate Kid. Uh, some of you may remember the original Karate Kid movies, and there was Mr. Miyagi, who taught Daniel's son um, a, a form of Okinawan karate. But the way he did it is he first made him learn movements, and he later told him what they meant. And so you guys remember he, he had Daniel's son waxing his old classic cars, and he's waxing for like hours. He's learning this motion, he's waxing. What he learns later is this motion is a block. And so he was actually practicing the muscle movements of doing a block, but he didn't know why. And sometimes I wonder when I'm asking you to touch my finger and do this stuff, if it sort of feels like I'm just asking you to wax on. And so maybe what I'm trying to accomplish with this series of videos is explaining to you the why behind um, the tool of the neuro exam. Is I asked my MA Amber, it was super nice of her, she let me record while I did a neuro exam on her. And so I have video footage on, an, on a screening neuro exam that I did. I want to take segments of, of that recording and I want to break it down into sections and I want to talk about the sections, not to teach you the neuro exam, but to help decode it or demystify it. And so it's my hope that it, it'll help you better understand what the heck we're doing when we're asking you to do all this weird stuff. Now, before I jump into that very first uh, segment, I want to make some general comments about the neuro exam. The neurological examination is a tool the way that a ruler is a tool. And you can apply this tool to learn stuff about a human being, specifically how the various systems, the neurological systems, are working, or if they're not working, and if there's dysfunction, where is it? Is it in the brain, or which portion of the brain, or is it in the spinal cord, or is it in the nerves, or the muscles, etc.? And the neuro exam has a very important role in MS neurology. We use the neuro exam to diagnose multiple sclerosis. We use the neuro exam to diagnose progression of disease. We use the neuro exam to diagnose an attack. All right, that's enough of a preamble. Let's jump into this. And today I've chosen to start by highlighting one portion of the neuro exam, the motor exam. The motor exam is testing the muscles, the nerves that run the muscles, the spinal cord that runs the nerves, and the brain that runs the spinal cord. So there's this system, this series that's set up. And our neuro exam, the motor neuro exam, allows us to understand if it's working or if not, and if not, where. So in this first clip, I'm testing something called pronator drift. And you ask the human to hold their arms out straight uh, with their palms up towards the ceiling. We're actually looking for certain patterns of weakness where the arm curls in in a certain way, which tells us that there's damage to the brain and spinal cord on the other side. This gives us insight not into the way the muscles work, but into the way the wiring of the brain and spinal cord. And I'm sharing this with you so that you gain an understanding for the use of the neuro exam as a tool to subtly tease out if there are problems and where there are problems, etc. These fine finger movement tests are some of the most complex thing you could ask the upper extremity to do. And the way that we accomplish this task, the speed at which we do it, the cadence, all tells me about how that portion of the nervous system is working. In this next section, I'm formally testing muscle strength. And so I'm asking Amber to hold a certain position and then I'm pushing on those muscles as hard as I can to judge the resistance. And this can be really helpful based on the pattern of weakness. And to, to make this point, I want to use the uh, discussion of forest versus the trees. You can hone in on this muscle is weak, but that's not really as useful as looking at the pattern of muscles. 
Certain patterns of weakness give us great insight into what's going on. Certain patterns tell us spinal cord. Certain patterns tell us left side of the brain. And so looking at the patterns of weakness can teach us that. And we learn that through this portion of the neuro exam. In this portion of the exam, I'm testing deep tendon reflexes where we identify a tendon that's attached to one of the muscles and we smack it. And then we're looking at the response of the muscle because what happens is when we stretch that tendon, it sends a message to a portion of the spinal cord, which sends a message back. And the robustness of the message, based on the robustness of the way the leg moves, gives us insight if, into if that portion of the spinal cord is working normally, if it's overly excited, or if it's suppressed. And based on those findings, it gives us insight into whether this is more likely to be a spinal cord problem or a nerve problem and at what level. Really cool information, again, which we learned through the neuro exam. These tests look at pathologic reflexes, reflexes that we don't expect to see. By scratching the bottom of the foot, we're looking at the response of the toes. And there's a normal response amongst adults. Then there's a different response when there's been damage to certain portions of the brain. So if, if we scratch the bottom of the toes and find this abnormal response, which we call the Babinski, it teaches us that there's been damage to the brain or spinal cord on the other side. These next series of tests are amongst my very most favorite because they're functional tests and they involve watching the human being get up and walk around. I learn more from watching a gait exam than almost anything else I do in the neuro exam. Now here we see standing without your arms. And this tests uh, some balance and coordination and planning, and it also tests the strength of the upper thighs and buttocks and hips. And so the pattern with which someone stands teaches the, the examiner certain aspects of the neuro exam functionally. Likewise, watching someone walk casually is extremely educational. There's different phases to walking. There's a portion where you pick your, your hip up. There's a portion where you swing your knee. There's a portion where the heel hits the ground. There's a portion where you roll your foot onto your toes. Each of these steps, each portion uh, can be done correctly or it, can be a, or it can be done abnormally. And the way that it's done abnormally teaches us about what's wrong. So again, there are patterns of walking that tell us that person's had damage to this portion of that brain or this person has had damage to this portion of the spinal cord. And that's very useful just by watching someone walk. Here you see what I call provocative tests, having people do stuff that's challenging. Here we're walking on our heels and toes, and here we're hopping. And there's other tests like having someone walk backwards or skip down the hall or walk while moving their head. And these again ferret out very subtle changes that might be missed if you were just doing very direct muscle testing. And so there you have it guys, a quick uh, introduction into one portion of the neuro exam, here the motor exam, and how we use this to learn things about that neurological system. I hope that you found this helpful and I am really looking forward to getting your feedback, good, bad, or ugly. So please leave comments down in the section below. If this type of video seems interesting to you, I can make a whole series on it because I've recorded an entire neuro exam and this is one small chunk. Once again, my name is Aaron Boster and thank you for learning about MS with me. If you like this video, that's awesome and please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking that little red button. Until my next video, take care.